Normally, when a company upgrades a product, you expect it to be better. Like maybe some features stayed the same, but you certainly wouldn't expect any of them to be worse. And that's not necessarily the case here. The pricing on the Tab A8 and the Tab A7 is also really surprising. If you're watching this from outside the US, please let me know in the comments section where you're from and what the cost of both of these tablets are where you live. Ultimately, the Tab A7 was a good budget tablet when it was released in 2020. But now, almost a year and a half later, can we say the same thing about the Tab A8? At first glance, you actually might not be able to tell the difference between the two, but the Tab A7 is slightly longer and narrower. So if you're buying an accessory like a case, make sure that you get the right one because they're not interchangeable. Both tablets have rounded corners and a rounded edge on the back, but the radius of the curve on the Tab A8 is smaller, which I think makes it look nicer. Now the black edge on the top of the Tab A8 is also slightly thinner, which makes the bezels look smaller, and the rounded corners of the display are curved nicely by comparison to the ones on the Tab A7, which are a bit jagged. Now looking around the edges, both tablets have power buttons and volume controls on the right, a USB-C port on the bottom, four speaker grills to accommodate the quad speaker system, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and a micro SD card slot which can be used to expand the internal storage by up to one terabyte. One thing to remember is that the additional storage is primarily used for files rather than for installing apps. So you'll still wanna make sure that you get enough internal storage for the apps and the games that you want. Now back to the design, the front facing camera is on the long edge of the display and it can be used with the optional facial recognition option for authentication. Now let's get to the displays because there are some interesting differences here. So the display size is virtually identical. 10.5 inches on the Tab A8 versus 10.4 inches on the Tab A7. But we're actually getting a lower resolution of 1920 by 1200 versus 2000 by 1200, an aspect ratio of 16 by 10 versus 5 by 3, and we're getting a lower pixel density of 216 pixels per inch versus 224. Now the differences in resolution or pixel density aren't meaningful when you're using these tablets, but I'm surprised that after a year and a half, Samsung didn't take a larger leap forward with the display. I'm not expecting the Super AMOLED display that we have on the Tab S7 Plus, but I was hoping for a little better than what we got. When looking at the displays side by side, I noticed that the Tab A8 display is a bit cooler or more blue, and it's a little less saturated, so colors don't pop quite as much. Now I'm being super picky here because I can see them both side by side, but if you only showed me one, I would have a really tough time telling you which one it was. Now as far as brightness goes, they both measured out to be at about the same peak brightness, and both displays have a refresh rate of 60 hertz. If you plan on using these tablets to watch video, to surf the web, to take notes, work with various productivity apps or even social media, you're not really gonna notice the difference between the two. But when we get to gaming, there will be some important differences which will tie into the new processor. But first, let's cover the camera and audio system. So both tablets have an eight megapixel rear facing camera that's capable of recording video at 1080p at 30 frames per second. Now personally, I don't really use the rear facing cameras on any of my tablets because I have better cameras on my phones. So for the most part, I don't really overvalue image quality on a tablet, but here are a few samples. One thing I wanted to mention is that although both cameras have the same resolution, the image file size on the Tab A7 is 1.39 megapixels versus 3.33 megapixels on the Tab A8. And when it comes to the front facing camera, both tablets have a five megapixel camera that's located in the center of the long edge. Now this way, when you have it mounted to a case and you're on a video call, you're framed right in the center of the frame and the camera is nice and high off the desk. Now looking at the audio system, both tablets have a quad stereo speaker system and although they don't seem to be identical, the audio quality is very similar. Now overall, I'm happy with the sound from both. I might give a very slight edge to the Tab A8, but it wouldn't be much if at all. And just like the display, it wouldn't be something that I could use to tell these apart if I only got to listen to one of them. Now another nice benefit that they both share is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which can be used with wired headphones or a headset. Now I just mentioned cases. So both tablets are big enough to use with a keyboard case. And I'll link to the one that I use in the description. Now remember that because there is a slight difference in size, you have to get the right case for your tablet because they're not interchangeable. Now another option is to get an external keyboard like the Logitech K480, which would work great with both. Now as far as using a stylus, neither one of these is compatible with Samsung's S Pen, so you'll have to move to a higher end model if that's something that you're looking for. You can always use 
use one of those capacitive stylus options, but in my opinion, those don't offer the best user experience. Now let's talk about processing power. And this is where things get interesting because it's a bit of a split decision and the benchmarks don't exactly line up with the actual user experience. So as far as chips, we're looking at the Unisoc Tiger T618 on the Tab A8 versus a Snapdragon 662 on the Tab A7. For single core performance, the Tab A8 scored 364 versus 316 on the Tab A7. And for multi-core performance, we're looking at 1250 versus 1405. So we're getting better single core performance on the Tab A8, but better multi-core performance on the Tab A7. Another important factor is GPU performance, where the Tab A8 scored a much higher 981 when compared to the 384 on the Tab A7. And we're going to see this come into play in a bit when we talk about gaming. When I look at my actual user experience, the Tab A8 feels more responsive and a bit less laggy for pretty much everything that I do. So things like opening apps, switching between open apps, like moving from one tab to another in the browser, or just navigating around the UI, those types of things are better on the Tab A8. Even something as simple like the auto rotate of the display was a bit quicker on the A8. And when looking at multitasking, the resolution of both displays is close enough to where there isn't really a meaningful difference in terms of how much you can see on the screen without scrolling. Now the Tab A8 might be a bit more responsive with multiple apps open in split view, but it's really close. Now both tablets have the same size battery, 7,040 milliamp per hour, and I was able to get through a full day of normal use with either as long as I don't spend hours playing PUBG. And if you'd like for me to include these in my battery drain test, let me know in the comment section. All right, so now let's get to gaming where there's a lot to talk about and then we'll get to that weird pricing. So if you're looking to play less demanding games, both tablets are going to work without any issues. But when I tried to play PUBG and COD Mobile, I got kind of mixed results. For PUBG on the Tab A8, I was able to set graphics to smooth or balanced and then frame rate to ultra. With the Tab A7, I could only go with smooth graphics and high frame rate or balanced graphics and medium frame rate. If you do happen to have a Tab A7, I would recommend going with smooth and high for the best gaming experience. The Tab A8 was also able to go to HD graphics and then high frame rate, but personally, I prefer smooth and ultra. For COD Mobile, things sort of went in the opposite direction where my Tab A8 capped out at medium graphic quality and high frame rate. The Tab A7 gave me the option of very high graphic quality as long as I stayed at medium frame rate, but if I wanted high frame rate, then the only option was low graphic quality. So this is an area where you need to decide if you're prioritizing graphic quality or frame rate. Personally, I would rather have the medium graphic quality with high frame rate on the Tab A8, but let me know in the comment section what you would choose. When it comes to audio, the quad speakers work very well for gaming. They're plenty loud and they make it easy to identify where sounds like footsteps are coming from. Now, personally, I use a wired headset and I like the fact that both of these have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack so I can get better audio and then charge the tablet at the same time if necessary. Both tablets also worked wonderfully when paired with an Xbox controller and Xbox Game Pass. As long as I had a solid internet connection, I was able to play all of my favorite games and the display was plenty good. Now, there were times where I wished that it was a little bit brighter, but that's pretty much the case with any budget tablet. All right, so now let's talk about the strange pricing that we we have here in the US and I'm using the prices from the Samsung website, but you can usually find better prices by using the links in the description. So the Tab A7 is available with 32 or 64 gigabytes of storage and both models come with three gigs of RAM. The Tab A8 is available with 32 gigabytes of storage and three gigs of RAM and then 64 or 128 gigabytes of storage and four gigs of RAM. So the 32 gigabyte version of the Tab A7 and the Tab A8 are both $230. And the 64 gigabyte version of both is $280, which doesn't really make sense to me. Again, let me know where you live and what the prices are there because I don't really understand what's going on in the US. And personally, I got the 128 gig version of the Tab A8 for $330. Remember that you also have a micro SD card slot, so you are able to expand the internal storage, but that storage is really just for files and not for installing apps. Now, if you're not installing a lot of big apps or a lot of big games, then you can definitely get by with less 
and let me know in the comments section if you have any questions. Ultimately, for me, this is somewhat of a confusing release from Samsung. So the budget Android tablet market continues to grow in popularity, especially as more and more users are engaging in online learning. Mobile gaming is also growing by the day, and it's been a year and a half since the release of the Tab A7, and the pricing of both of these tablets is identical. Now, of course, the Tab A8 is offered with 128 gigs of storage, and then both the 64 and the 128 gig versions have four gigs of RAM, but I would still consider this to be an incremental improvement that may leave the door open for other growing brands. Now you should watch this video right here to see how the Tab S7 compares with the Tab S7 Plus and the Tab S7 FE. Hopefully this video was helpful. Click on my face to subscribe. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.